Welcome back, everybody, to the Hearthstone Championship Tour for the Americas region. It's the winter prelims. My name's Frodan. I'm joined by Raven. And real quick, I'm going to talk to Raven, but I want to update you guys on the winner's bracket. I mentioned the player was able to upset Amnesiac in the winner's bracket to advance to the top 16 guaranteed, and that was Talion. Not only the player we know very well, uh, a couple players also joining him, too. Alessi High, as well as Chess Dude and Kit Kats. And we're about to find out one more between Chalky and APX Void. I'm joined by Raven, uh, a caster primarily from EU, uh, who has gone through the So You Thinking cast competition, who also blends the lines between caster and player. Can you talk a little bit about that as a process uh, from your end? Are you really a person that casts a lot? Or are you a person that also plays for your team? Can you talk about that? Yeah, so I've played, uh, my history started off as a player, mm -hmm. uh, mainly in a lot of UK events. Um, but then, uh, you know, as time gone on, I got into casting quite uh, relatively early on, like a year and a half or so ago. Mm -hmm. I just started casting mainly again, like smaller EU, uh, EU and UK events. But uh, yeah, just going from there. And to be honest, I've started to just lean more towards the casting role because the, the more you learn about it, the more like you realize it's actually a lot of work to mm -hmm. be able to keep up with the, you know, the wide spectrum of uh, the players, deck guides and everything like that. So yeah, just uh, working towards that now. What do you think, you know, outside of having a fantastic accent of the English language, what do you think is a key ingredients of making a good caster? Uh, I think you just have to be confident in what you're talking about and actually just enjoy the game enough to want to explain it to others. That's the main thing I'm like. I mean, I do this with everything. Like any game I play, I always want to talk to someone about it, discuss it, strategies, and, uh, and also just explain it to people who don't necessarily know about the game just to show them how cool it is. Uh, you've been casting and working alongside Aquablad and Subtle for a long time. Um, and now that you guys have risen up together as community casters to even work on the official championship tour, uh, I do want to ask you some pretty important questions. Who's the best at Hearthstone among you three? Who do you, would win if you played a round of Robin like three-way until the death? Who comes out of it and why? Uh, it's almost definitely going to be me. Um, <laughs> Aqua probably a close second and Sol third. Just oh, okay. uh, Sol's just too focused on uh, taking the mick out of me, so I think that would distract him too much from preparation. Right. Uh, so, you know, and he writes a lot of guides as well. So, mm -hmm. And they're very good guides, to be fair, so I'm not completely trolling. Uh, but yeah, he spends too much time doing other things. So I think I would come first. Nick second and Sol definitely distant third. And there it is, the top bands from the UK man himself. We're done over here on this side of the tavern. Send it over to TJ and crew and see what's going to happen for our last match of day number one. Thank you very much, Dan. And once again, welcome back, everybody, to the Hearthstone Championship Tour America's Winter Preliminary. I'm joined on the desk by Brian Kibler and Cora once again. And uh, Brian Kibler, I want to get your thoughts here. So. You did have the chance to participate, but chose not to. It's true. Now, after seeing a full day of competition, how do you think you would have fared had you decided to participate? Uh, well, I mean, one of the reasons that I that I chose not to participate is because my, my focus recently has been, you know, on casting. Uh, I did cast last weekend uh, at the Europe prelims, so it would be it would be difficult for me to really make that sort of guess without thinking about the kind of a lineup I might have brought myself. Yeah. Um, I did really like Nostrum's lineup in the last match, uh, even though I'm a pretty, pretty not, uh, pretty un, uh, unfavorable opinion of yeah. Freeze Mage. Yeah. <laughs> I was trying to think of the right way to say that, but uh, I, I really like the fact that he was targeted Secret Paladin, which is what it felt like, and we saw that work very effectively against Admirable, uh, taking him down three games uh, with, with uh, that deck in, in his crosshairs, really. Yeah. Well, the correct answer was I would have been undefeated, but <laughs> <laughs> anyway, we'll move on to course. So your team, uh, Vicious Syndicate, had mm -hmm. a, a lot of participants. Uh, how have they been doing? I know we saw Demigod drop out, but how have the rest been doing so far? Um, I followed it a little bit. Demigod, unfortunately, dropped out a bit early. I think Ray C is still in. Mm -hmm. um, so, rooting for him. I have been too busy. I've been watching all the matches you guys have been casting. I've been, you know, keeping updated with Twitter. And I, I, it's been a busy day, but it's been a great day so far. And I think all the players we've seen have been playing really, really well. Yeah, well, it looks like our final match of the day is ready. It is going to be Chucky from Team Dignitas taking on APX Void from Hearthlytics. Now, uh, Chucky, we saw him play earlier. Some interesting decks from his side, but APX Void is known mostly as being a tempo mage player. He does have mage in his lineup. So, Brian Kibler, what are your thoughts on Tempo Mage? I think a Tempo Mage is a strong deck. Uh, there's a lot of there's a lot of ways you can build Tempo Mage to be stronger against particular uh, opponents. Uh, for instance, you can play Mirror Image, which makes your deck a lot better against weapon classes, but mm -hmm. generally weaker against uh, minion-based classes like Zoo. Yeah. Uh, so uh, it, it really depends on how you sort of expect the metagame to look and how you build your deck against that in terms of how you're going to fare. 
Yeah, and we actually see both players are going to have Shaman. Uh, a couple times throughout the day, we've had, you know, both lineups have Shaman, but one gets banned. Uh, Cora, it's probably aggro Shaman. Most likely. Do you like this deck? I actually do. I did not used to at all. I hated it. Um, I played some mech Shaman in the past, but Shaman is not one of my favorite classes. But you know what? This deck, it, it, it just wins so quickly, and sometimes it's so efficient. And if you want some fast games on ladder, this deck is, is one of the better ways to go. Yeah. All right. Well, jumping into game number one, speaking of Shamans, it is going to be Shaman versus Shaman. Now, APX Void seems like he's got a standard aggro Shaman list, but Chalky has got some interesting tech cards that I know from talking to him in the past, a Flame Tongue Totem being one of them, and I know we'll see a couple other surprises. Does Flame Tongue Totem fit in an aggro Shaman list? A Flame Tongue Totem is a card that hasn't really seen a lot of play in the sort of more modern versions of, uh, of aggro Shaman. We did see it in mech Shaman decks, uh, but the... Uh, the new sort of aggro shaman decks have typically uh, typically avoided it. They really don't want to use their hero power. They don't usually have things like Whirling Zapomatic that really get buffed by it. Uh, but it is it is a card that I think actually in this matchup might be fairly strong if you do expect other aggro decks to get more value out of like your totems, for instance, yeah. uh, which otherwise is very weak. Yeah. So in the mirror matchup, Core, uh, what's the the key to uh, opening up strong? You know what, the mirror matchup is actually, uh, the aggro shaman is seen as, you know, a way to burst down your, your opponent very quickly with spells. The mirror matchup is all about board. It's all about minions. Um, so you want you want that curve, you want the one, two, three. Um, this is where Tunnel Trog is absolutely pivotal. If you can point into Feral Spirits following it up, Totem Golem is great because uh, the shaman has a lot of ways to deal three damage, but mm -hmm. four damage is a little bit harder. You've got the lightning bolt, but you know what? I roll three damage on Crackle all the time, so it's a little bit more tough. <laughs> um, but yeah, it's all about fighting for that board state and really pushing damage with board. And then usually the first person to Doom Hammer has such an advantage. Speaking of uh, fighting for board there, the uh, shape shift that APX Void picks up off of his Sir Finley Discover. Uh, that's a very powerful hero power in this matchup. It does allow you to use your hero power to actually fight for the board yeah. uh, and also happens to combo very well with Doom Hammer, which we do see in APX Void's hand. Yeah, it turns it from 16 total damage into 24 total damage. So uh, this matchup a lot of time... can't even count that high. <laughs> yeah, I know. That's a, that's a lot of damage from a single card. So... Another thing to point out, Chalky actually has a Dr. Boom in his aggro shaman list, which is a little weird. And I actually have a direct quote from Chalky from a week ago when I talked to him about what types of decks he was going to bring. He said, if you aren't bringing four Dr. Booms to this tournament, you're making a mistake. That, that's a bold claim. I yeah. believe it. <laughs> yeah. Even put it in a deck where normally it is not ran, so. You know what? I don't hate it. I mean, typically you don't see Dr. Boom in aggro shaman decks because they are so focused on the early game. And we, we actually kind of see exactly that reason right here. Uh, Chalky is having to struggle a little bit. He doesn't have any good two mana play this turn. Uses his Rock Biter to clear off that Flame Juggler. But as we were saying, this is a, a game that is about board control. And uh, Chalky has not been able to really fight for that very well at all. Yeah, unfortunately, not a too strong start from Chalky. APX Void had that Sir Finley right from the start, was able to pick up the Shapeshift, which will actually probably give him some armor over the course of the game, which can be really, really useful in the Aggro Shaman Mirror. And Chalky is picking up that early game now, but unfortunately, on turn four, you want to be setting up for a Doom Hammer. You want to be setting up for your big damage turns, and it just doesn't look like he has those cards in his hand, unfortunately. And APX Void has put himself in a situation where he is going to play that, be able to play that Doom Hammer right on... Oh, nope, just kidding. That's four mana. <laughs> well, he's going to play it right on time he, next turn. Well, yeah, but, uh, <laughs> if he yeah, if he doesn't play Feral Spirits and, here, but uh, I doubt he would. That, uh, that Argent Horse Rider is a pretty good draw for APX Void. It does allow him to uh, establish another threat on board while removing his opponent's threat. Yeah. Uh, and he's at a, a healthy 30 life to his opponent's 25. Uh, and as we said, uh, he, he's threatening to play Doom Hammer next turn. Yeah, at that point, the Doom Hammer is going to be hitting face for so much damage. And Dr. Boom, while it is a very large threat, uh, Doom Hammer, two damage, you know, m Wind Fury per turn, you get four damage total. He picks up a Rock Biter, picks up a Crackle, a Lava Burst. The Dr. Boom's just too slow in this matchup. And this is an interesting an interesting choice for Chalky, because in most cases, you're playing Aggro Shaman, and you're just like, oh, God, Steady Shot, snap that <laughs> yeah. choice off. But it's a little bit different here, and we see Chalky pick the... Fire Blast, because he wants more interaction with the board, just like we were discussing earlier. Yeah. Normally, I can't even click that steady shot quick yeah. enough. As soon as, I see the, <laughs> as soon as I see that dark green, I'm like, yep. 
You kind of have to kind of have to pause and be like, do I want steady shot? Do I want shape shift? Because in some <laughs> cases, when you have Doom Hammer up, it's actually a little bit better than the steady shot. You get that one armor. It's not too much of a difference, but yeah. there is, you know, a method to the madness. Yeah. The, speaking of Doom Hammer, it comes down for APX Void. He's able to use it plus his board to clear off uh, Chalky's wolves, uh, but does take some damage in the process. And now Chalky is the one with the board, but APX Void is the one with the Doom Hammer. Yeah, and that's not a great pickup. He really needs to play Dr. Boom on seven. So Crackle is almost out of the question, unless he wants to delay that another turn. And I don't think he's got the luxury of being able to do that. I don't think there's any real incentive for him to Crackle this turn. Not only would it delay Dr. Boom, but it's just, that's, you know, that's like the smite to face turn one. There's not really much incentive <laughs> to do it right now. Ah, I don't know about that. <laughs> Yeah, it's yeah. unfortunate. It's it's essentially a hero power pass for Chalky this turn. The Crackle, I mean, it could potentially be six damage to face, but throwing off your Dr. Boom turn, it's yeah, it's not worth it at all. And here, speaking of Crackle, APX Void picks up one of his own. He could actually Crackle plus Lava Burst if he really wants to here, uh, and that would unlock the two uh, the two mana crystals he used for Doom Hammer last turn, allowing him to hero power and hit for six, plus the damage from those two burn spells. Uh, I can't count that high once again, so I'm not really sure how much <laughs> damage that damage. would do. It'd be a lot. Uh, <laughs> he is choosing to Lava Shock first and not fight. Oh, he's going to Lava Shock. Okay, the... the uh, Maybe a Lava Shock and makes Feral sense. Spirits. And the, game is, the game is not really at a, uh, a point where I, I imagine he feels comfortable just going kind of all into face. I, I don't know. It's the, it's the crackles that you play in the early game that aren't... You know, crackling for lethal. That those are the ones that roll the for one, six. The ones that assert dominance. Yeah, you know? exactly. Yeah. Those the are the ones that roll need. for six. Yeah, Ooh, exactly. that 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 feral spirits is a very good draw from Chuck. He needed some way to defend himself after this Doctor Boom, because while Doctor Boom is obviously extremely strong, uh, he's not really threatening to kill APX Void just yet, <laughs> and uh, he's going to need to to be able to resist the brunt of that Doom Hammer. Yeah, and these Boom Bots could be pretty worry, devastating to a board that's usually relatively small or low in health uh, from Aggro Shamans. Yeah, we are going to see a lot of damage coming in from APX Void this turn. Six from the Doom Hammer, thanks to the plus one from Shapeshift. Uh, this will put Chalky all the way down to nine, but with Dr. Boom on the board and that Feral Spirit in hand, APX Void may need to find some burn to actually finish this game off. Yeah, yeah that Tunnel Trog was not what he wanted to see there. On turn one, that's the best card the Shaman can play, but on turn seven, it combos with the Crackle a little bit. We'll end up having two attack, but too slow at this point. Not going to get to face. It looks like Chalky wants to go ahead and use his ping here to guarantee a Boom Bot will hit a different target. Uh, any of the other targets is pretty good for him. Face is actually it's not necessarily not what he wanted. He wants to use, yeah, Crackle here effectively does seven damage because mm -hmm. it lets Dr. Boom hit the face. Crackle for seven? That's amazing. OP, OP. <laughs> no, and then he is able to clear off the Argent Horse Rider with the Finley and the Boombot, dealing a little bit more damage to face. Yeah, now, okay, three's now, pretty reasonable. I mean, right now, Chalky has lethal next turn. Mm -hmm. Suddenly, you know, that Dr. Boom did a lot of damage, and now APX Void is the one who, who needs to draw something to actually close this game out. He finds Lightning Bolt. It could be lethal. Actually, wow. Yeah, the, the, the Crackle. Yeah, this could very well be... Oh. Um, Close, but, uh, so see, those close. are the crackles so that close. never roll six. Those are the ones that never roll six <laughs> when you absolutely needed to. But uh, I mean, that's a Dr. Boom doing work. That's mm -hmm. Jockey uh, being rewarded for his decision at making an interesting tech choice to a deck that a lot of people have sort of figured out. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and there we go. We see uh, Dr. Boom. It, it did kind of rot in Chalky's hand early, but APX Void was just not able to close things out fast enough, and ultimately the the high power level and immediate presence of Dr. Boom did win that game for Chalky. Yeah, yeah I think the Feral Spirits was definitely, oh, yeah. maybe even more MVP mm -hmm. than the Dr. Boom there. If he hadn't had that to follow up the Boom, he would have just been dead a turn earlier. So the combination of those two cards easily gave him the win. Yeah, yeah. Great job for including that Feral Spirits. <laughs> In the deck. No. I mean, taunt is cheat, as in the Smork Mirror, for yeah, sure. That's but Chalky true. decided he's gonna he's gonna put aside his pride, put the taunt minions in, <laughs> and it worked out for once. So. Yeah. Well, they're taunt minions that buff your tunnel trot. That's true. So. It's taunt and also <laughs> aggro at the same time, so we can't be too sad about that. I remember Chalky's tweet when Standard was announced. He said, "The oppressive days of Sludge Belcher and MT <laughs> Killbot are over." Uh, he really hates those cards. But Chalky still has a uh, Warlock and Paladin remaining. Mm -hmm. uh, he does have a, a Zoo Warlock and, of course, Secret Paladin. Uh, APX Void 
still has to find him with that shaman. It do, it is favored, right, and against pal against secret paladin. Uh, generally, I do think that the uh, the very aggressive decks typically do quite well against Seeker Paladin. Mm -hmm. Seeker Paladin is a very strong mid-game deck yep. and does have the possibility for strong openings, but it can struggle and fall behind. Has no heals, generally speaking, so decks with a lot of direct damage that can put it early pressure typically have an advantage. Yeah, and uh, also APX Void has that Temple Mage, uh, d a, a deck that he's very well known for. He finished top 10 in January. With Temple Mage, so we're assuming he didn't, he didn't, you know, switch to Freeze Mage at this point. I yeah, mean, we yeah. could be surprised. <laughs> it's possible. That's one thing that a lot of these players that are known as sort of those. You asked for. Oh, did he switch? Wow. No. Uh, Emperor Thor. Okay, it wait. could be. It could be. It could still be Tempo. I There's don't know. A chance. Emperor Thorsen is a bold choice for Temple Mage. It is unusual. Usually, when you're playing Tempo Mage, you want cards that give you, as the name would suggest, Tempo. <laughs> and uh, have a pretty immediate impact on the board. Emperor Thorson tends to be more of a combo deck style of card. Uh, it can set up big th big plays with like Antonitis, even in a Tempo Mage deck. You can s sometimes see Tempo Mage decks that have Ronin as well, and obviously discounting your your Arcane Missiles for free is uh, is pretty impactful. But yeah, we could be surprised. More importantly, we see the Sea Giant in Chalky's Zoo Warlock. Uh, TJ, did you have <laughs> anything to do with this? No. Um, <laughs> And I didn't even know that Chucky was going to run the Sea Giant, but I'm a huge fan of, of Sea Giant and Zoo, if people have been listening to me uh, throughout <laughs> the broadcast. Um, uh, Chucky, I'm not sure what finishers he, he runs, but a lot of the high-level North American players that do play Zoo have been switching over to that more Chinese version of the Zoo that was popularized by that player, Doof, uh, where they do run Sea Giants. You take out the Doom Guards, you run a more consistent early game, and then you still have Leroy for the finisher. So uh, we'll have to see as this match goes on. All right, well, Antique Killbot is not he a is Tempo Mage card. Freeze wow. Mage. Throwing a, us for all a little bit of a loop here. Uh, I was actually excited to see a Tempo Mage yeah. <laughs> For once in my life, I was like, oh, Tempo Mage. And now, huh. Yeah. Well, Tempo Mage is a good ladder deck, but um, in, ter in a tournament environment where you know exactly what you're going to be going up against, I Tempo Mage is pretty weak to zoo. It is. Yeah, it definitely struggles to beat. Uh, it, one of the biggest problem cards is actually Imp Gang Boss, uh, that even if you do have some of your more efficient removal mm -hmm. effects like Frostbolt, like Flame Cannon, uh, you can still find yourself falling behind on the board to that card very easily. And when Tempo Mage falls behind against a deck like Zoo, it, it really struggles to catch back up in the game. Yeah, they usually don't run uh, AoE like Flame Strikes, which would give it a bit of an edge against the Zoo, but it's just there are so many other spots that they would rather fill with more useful cards. Yeah. APX Void, it's, it's kind of funny that he did the switch up. He's known uh, among a lot of North, North American pros as the guy that always has Mana Worm on turn one. <laughs> so For once, <laughs> I, I think we're witnessing history right now. Yeah. Yeah. I think he got unlucky this game. He didn't draw Mana Worm. <laughs> or uh, last night he was, you know, practicing with his Tempo Mage and he never saw a Mana Worm. So he's just like, you know what? You're out. <laughs> Goodbye. Ooh, Double a second Sea Giant. Giant. It's actually amusingly... Kind of bad in this matchup. Your yeah, opponent's not, not really going to be playing many, many minions. You're often going to find yourself struggling to get big minions of your own on the board. So, or rather, a, a, a significant number of minions on your own on the board. Yeah, definitely. The freeze mage is not going to help you out with getting those sea gens on board. If you were versing, you know, a zoo warlock mirror or a secret paladin, which we've seen so much of at this point, then the sea giants can come down, you know, almost for free most of the time, or or four mana, something absurd. But with the freeze mage. You're not going to let any of those minions stick on the board, and the Sea Giants are, are pretty much going to come out for what they're worth, which is about seven or eight mana. All right, looks like APX Void kind of forced to use his burst damage as removal here, uh, but does manage to whittle Chalky down to just one attack worth of minions in that Haunted Creeper, not under a ton of pressure. Yeah, you're, you're okay in this matchup with just sort of throwing out your burn spells because you know the Warlock's going to get themselves low by tapping. Zoo, they don't have a way to block damage. They don't have a way to heal back up, except for, of course, Lothab. Uh So really your win condition in this match is just to try and grind them out, you know, not let them do uh, enough damage to sort of set up lethal plays, play around Lothab as much as possible, and then once they've tapped themselves to death, that's when you throw out the last bit of burn to kill them. Yeah, exactly. You don't even have to depend on, you know, Alex Draza on turn nine, follow up into Antonitis and a million fireballs. The Zoo Warlock is going to do most of the work for you if the Freeze Mage plays it right. Yeah. Ooh. And so Meccano. You were talking I about uh, the Chinese Zoo plays this card a lot. Yeah. And uh, I was I was watching a match with, uh, I can't remember who it was. I was spectating a match online, and a Zoo player had, like, two flame, uh, 
Flame Imps, and a Knife Juggler. Played in Handsome Meccano on like turn four with a coin, and everything got wind carried. <laughs> it was oh just like, gosh. oh, geez. That card can do some ridiculous things yeah. in certain circumstances. It's definitely an exciting card to see here. And uh, I'd be curious to see if Chalky chooses to coin out this Nerubian Egg to protect his board from Blizzard. And uh, it looks like he will. So not only does that protect his board from Blizzard, but it also ensures that the uh, the Enhanced Meccano will have minions to possibly buff if he does just get Blizzarded this turn. Mm -hmm. But it looks like APX Void is just leaving the board alone. Oh, wow. He might regret that next turn if Chalky chooses to play the Enhanced Meccano. Well, Enhanced Meccano on a board that has four total attack worth of minions is, uh, isn't as powerful as it might be. I kind of like a Sea Giant from Chalky here, actually. It's not the best, but I think if it were to give uh, the one ones Divine Shield, then they would live through an AoE, they'd be frozen, but at least then you have some some form of buff minion. So I do agree the Sea Giant is far superior here, but the Enhanced, it would have been okay. It would have been sweet. Imagine I'll give you it would have been fun. <laughs> I don't remember the this. last time I saw that. <laughs> Imagine if you give this Sea Giant Wind Fury or Divine oh, yes. Shield. Oh, yes. That could actually be game changing. Yeah. But uh, it, speaking of game changing, APX Void has picked up Frost Nova Doomsayer, which uh, it looks like he's, he's about to pull the trigger on. Yeah, Chalky's not going to be too happy about that, but we do see the Leroy Jenkins come into hand, so I'm guessing that this is literally just the full Chinese zoo list that you were talking about, TJ. Yeah. Um, I, I actually really like it. I'm, I'm still on the fence of the Leroy Doomguard discussion, but I think it's pretty cool. Yeah, um, I think Dark Peddler actually made Leroy a little bit stronger. Because with Dark Peddler, you tend to have bigger hands earlier on. Um, especially if you can't play those one drops, or if they're situational like Power Overwhelming. So it makes Doomguards more likely to discard important things. And uh, Leroy Jenkins can still be comboed with those extra damage cards that you get from Dark Peddler, but oh it doesn't my. discard things. APX Void decided not to Frost Nova Doomsayer or Blizzard and instead just played the anti kill bot and pinged the Haunted Creeper. And now Chalky can play the Sea Giant, <laughs> run one of his 1 1 yep. Ipsen, and play Enhanced Omicano. Let's see it. That's the. Oh my what, goodness. What, what do we got? What do we got? And roll a, the dice. A full board with two 8 8s? It's a Fury! Wind Fear of the Sea Giant, that's 16 oh damage for that God, one minion alone. Oh my God, that's amazing. <laughs> and the other Sea Giant it's got Wind Fear too. Wind everything. <laughs> Not a single Divine Shield to be seen. Wow. <laughs> oh my that's God. That's unbelievable. Look at that zero two egg with Wind Fury. <laughs> it's so strong. There you go. That's crazy. Well, that, I mean, that could be, it, he's going to Blizzard next turn, almost for sure, or Frost now. There's going to be a freeze effect, but you know, power overwhelming on that egg and being able to attack twice. And you've got the six damage from Leroy coming out. Wow. <laughs> that, that, that was that's crazy. pretty cool. I like that. He saw APX Void's face as soon as he saw the Enhanced Meccano <laughs> come down. He was like, oh, geez. It's like, I have made some poor life decisions. Yeah, I think that, that Chucky's trying to figure out exactly how he wants to, yeah, use his damage here. He decides to just send everything to the face. Doesn't bother putting any damage uh, into removing that uh, that heal bot, he, I think he is expecting that he's very likely just going to get hit by the Frost Nova Doomsayer and just want to maximize his damage at this point. Yeah, and I don't know if there's any way that APX Void can can fully clear here. Uh, he can Frost Nova Doomsayer, which is going to buy him a turn, uh, but then there's still going to be an Arubian on the board, and there's going to be a Leroy that comes in hand, and he's not going to be able to play the Ice Block this turn, which means that if there is a power overwhelming that comes out of hand from Chalky, he will be able to end the game with Leroy. Well, this next turn, Leroy is going to be uh, oh yeah, can't be all of frozen. So yeah. he has no space That's for any true. minion, which is actually a pretty big deal. And I think that might have been part of Chalky's thought process yeah. when he was deciding whether he wanted to attack with one of with those uh, those imps. Uh, but now, yeah, he's actually in a position where he's unable to play anything. There's that Doctor Boom. Yeah. Oh wow, and that love Every deck is so actually far. that Every love deck. Deck is a great draw too. <laughs> And just completely shuts down the blizzard, and he's got two of them in hand. He actually played the aggro druid, which was banned out in this series, and we actually saw Dr. Boom get burned from the fell reaver <laughs> oh in the aggro no. shaman. So we know it's in there, but Poor he, Dr. Boom. Yeah, but we didn't so get impressed. to see it. Mm -hmm. uh, Freeze Mage is a fantastic deck at getting do? out of sticky situations like this, especially with Zoo, whose uh, burst is so limited. It has to come from the board. It has You have to have a combination of multiple cards, so... Yeah, and APX Boy does have two blizzards in hand, so he is capable of freezing the board up. With the ice block in play, the Leroy isn't going to be lethal by itself, but if he can 
get down that Dr. Boom, do some crazy boom bot damage. I mean, this in a few turns could still be Chalky's game. Yeah, I, I do kind of like, I think, the, the Dr. Boom this turn. It yeah. makes any sort of AoE effect kind of scary mm -hmm. uh, because it can potentially, it, it, at this point with, with APX Void at nine, there's no real threat of dying to boom bots. Uh, but he actually so doesn't want to get that mad scientist killed until the uh, the ice block is broken, I think. Yeah. Because he wants to get the second ice block to ensure that he gets a full turn worth of protection from it, I think. Yeah. Dark Peddler. That could be the card that Chalky needs to pick up some extra damage to couple with Leroy Jenkins. Dark Peddler could also pick up Soulfire, which if Chalky can... Uh, narrow it down to an ice barrier. So far, it could be a surprise card that comes out that uh, can kill APX Void. Yeah, I, I think the fact that uh, Dark Peddler can get both Power Overwhelming and Soul Fire, both of which represent four points of burst damage, uh, is one of the things that makes it such a powerful effect in these decks uh, in matchups like this. Mm -hmm. yeah, we that's do a see great the Blizzard point. come down with spell damage. So, uh, ooh. Ooh. ooh, that was that was pretty close to the optimal result. For uh, for Apex Void, but we do see the Owl oh, from Chalky. That okay. can that can open up the uh, the possibility of uh, breaking that block this turn. But it's a little bit awkward because uh, he knows that there's that that second uh, that second Mad Scientist, or rather that Mad Scientist in play that threatens so to get the next copy of Ice Block if he does just break it this turn. And even if the Mad Scientist brings out the barrier he's not going to be able to fight through it. Dark Peddler could give him Soul Fire, which is four damage through the barrier, but he's going to be popping at seven, which is just really awkward. Yeah. And also he has to worry about, Chuck is at 18 health. Yeah, this is a little, uh, a play that a lot of players actually somehow, uh, sometimes miss, being able to silence the freeze effect off of your own minion. He actually uh, is able to unleash Dr. Boom to, to crunch there. I've seen a number of players you know, who like silence, they'll have a Dr. Boom in play and they'll silence their opponent's Doomsayer. It's like, no, 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 silence your Dr. Boom, kill the Doomsayer. It's gonna, it's gonna catch knives from your mm -hmm. jugglers later in the game. Don't or, do it. Or damage well from boom bots. Yeah. yeah. So now the Lotheb comes down. Uh, it, it, this does give Chalky another window or rather, APX Void another window to get Ice Block from this Mad Scientist. I believe we've only we have only seen one barrier, if I recall correctly, so far. So this could get barrier. And if he gets the barrier, does Chalky just win? I, I mean, how does APX Void clear the board? You've got six damage from Lilo Leroy, a potential four more from the Dark Peddler. He can fireball to clear something off. So. Uh, Six plus two plus six. Yeah, he has a, a variety of minions in play that can actually help deal damage as well. Uh, the fireball can't quite, uh, he, he doesn't quite have the mana because of the loath mm -hmm. It's a fireball and ping. Yeah. So he has to uh, sort of pick pick and choose his spots here where he's actually getting the minions off the board. Fireball can take out Lotheb, yeah. uh, but he's not able to remove Lotheb, Dr. Boom, and the Nerubian. Yeah. And we have just gotten confirmation that the secret is in fact Ice Barrier on APX Void's side oh, of the wow. field. So uh, he's going to go ahead and clear off that Lothab, but Ice Barrier, 8 plus 7 is 15. He's got 4, 6, oh, well, 8. Oh, there's, there's the Defender, Defender Vargas, six. yeah. Yeah, this, sh two. this should be enough. I believe Chalky has the tools he needs to close this out. Ice Barrier is not enough. The Defender of Argus pumps these. We see that 8 damage go in, and then Leroy Jenkins He's got finishes one it off. damage over. Wow. So that is going to be Chalky taking game number two in what a lot of people say is an unfavored matchup for But the a zoo. lot of people don't see a wind fury CJ. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that, that, that turn was really, I think, what, what really swung that mm -hmm. game Chalky's way. He was in, in a, uh, a reasonable position, but was able to, to just generate suddenly like 20 damage from a board that put APX Void on an incredibly fast clock, and he just didn't have the time he needed to establish his defenses and turn the corner. Yeah, very true. Do you true. think it was a mistake for APX Void not to blizzard the turn that uh, Chalky ended up playing that Enhanced Mechano? It's tough because he he you know is, is looking at the board and seeing uh, you know a lot of things that he could potentially mm -hmm. uh, c clear up with a frost of a doomsayer later, and it's really enhancing mechano. You're not expecting to see it's this so out of your opponent, so that that is you know a little bit of an edge from those kind of surprise cards uh, that Chalky got from that game. Mm -hmm. uh, the Leroy there was basically exactly a doom guard. Yeah. He didn't need the extra damage, but uh, ultimately enhancing mechano had a huge impact that game. Yeah, and. It could be a, a matter of APX Void not being 
experience playing against this type of zoo. Mm-hmm. There still are a lot of people playing the, you know, the EU version of zoo, the the version that Zixo runs uh, all the what time. About with double zoo, man? This, what about This is the America's Championship. All right. it's American we have zoo. zoo too. Well, a lot of people have been playing what <laughs> I have dubbed course. American Zoo, which you, you take that that Chinese <laughs> core and you take out Enhanced Mechano. That's what they've been doing. But Chucky is just, you know, he's just going with a straight up double C giant and handsome Meccano. He's going all the way. But now Chucky has three opportunities to take a victory with Secret Paladin if he wants to move on. But as we saw in the last match, Admirable had the same opportunity and couldn't manage to do it. The uh, the Secret Paladin versus Freeze Mage matchup is certainly one that does favor the Freeze Mage, uh, but Secret Paladin is a deck that is capable of just powerful explosive starts. It's not like mid-range Paladin. It's not like a deck that we've, we've seen struggle quite a bit over years, really, against Freeze Mage, uh, because it is able to actually put the Freeze Mage player on a clock. No, it's definitely very difficult for the Secret Paladin to win this matchup, but if they tech a Lotheb, if they tech an Iron Beak Owl, and they do get a very nice start, it's definitely possible. But uh, neither player with particularly exciting opening hands, both of them running down the mulligan timer. Uh, this is something you see players do because they don't want to give information to their opponent prior to their opponent making their mulligan decisions. Yep. So uh, both of them running that, that clock down to the end. And uh, after the fact, I think APX Void probably got the better of the opening hands here. Uh, competitive Spirit, not a card you actually ever want to draw. <laughs> that card is in your deck, so it comes out for free. Uh, Creeper's pretty good, but no, uh, no turn three follow-up. Uh, Shredder and Kings are both excellent as well, but APX Void with all the tools he needs. Unfortunately, APX Void, though, draws the Ice Barrier, which early in the game, you would 100% rather that be your second Mad Scientist. Mm -hmm. um, Ice Barrier is a great card in this matchup, but you usually want to pull it from those scientists. It's kind of like Competitive Spirit in that way. Secrets, yeah. just stay in the deck. Come yeah. on. Yeah. Get out of Don't my Don't come until we call you out. <laughs> Yeah, it's the, the disadvantage of, of many of the secret classes is that sometimes you draw your secrets instead of cheating them into play through some sort of mechanic. Oh, how's that fair? <laughs> <laughs> and sometimes you have a mad scientist, oh. but he pulls a secret that you don't want, like right. in the last in the game. Last game. Yeah, the that, was, that was the wrong one, sorry. At least with Mysterious Challenger, you know what secrets you're going to get. It's, yeah. it's not random. Mm -hmm. uh, Chalky with a nice draw this turn, Muster for Battle, filling out his turn three curve, uh, letting him... Clear off, I imagine, this loot hoarder, and then just uh, send some damage to the face. Chipping away for one. Oh, no. Oh, OK. I was, just like, why? Why? I was like, why would he not attack? I don't understand. It was just, just, uh, just a little bit of delay there. Playing around the Molten Giants. Yeah. Oh, Giants Mage. All right, so Arcan Intellect for APX Void digs him a little bit farther. And now he just kind of has to decide what exactly he wants to do with his Mad Scientist. Just picks off one of the recruits. Another Shredder from Chalky, and his draws really come together since his opening hand. And this is, we were talking earlier uh, about how the Secret Paladin deck can have these kind of aggressive draws that, that uh, can put the Freeze Mage deck on the clock. Yeah. Cards like Shredder are a key part of that because they're able to actually generate significant threat that not only uh, can continue to deal damage to the opponent, but also are resi resilient to a lot of the removal that the Freeze Mage deck plays does choose to go with the, the higher pressure play of get you for four right now <laughs> with this uh, this Haunted Creeper, however. Yeah. Yeah, I like playing the Blessing of Kings while you have the chance. If you're the Secret Paladin, you kind of have to assume that your board is going to be permafrozen after a certain amount of time. Play the Blessing of Kings while you can, get the four damage in, and then the Shredder Death Rattle will usually be useful later on in the game. Yep. And Competitive Spirit might actually have some good targets to hit. A uh, Lothab comes down. Ooh. But I don't know if Lothab's really a good choice this early. Yeah, you're blocking spells, but the mage really hasn't had time to make a game plan yet. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, th I think that, that Chucky likely wants to hold on to this Lothab. He has a pretty good turn of just Shredder into Competitive Spirit here, uh, if he wants it. Uh, I think that, that if his opponent doesn't have Frost of a Doomsayer next turn, gives him a pretty strong board presence for, uh, for his, his position and leaves him with the Lotheb to potentially cut off a, a future critical turn as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I definitely like keeping the Lotheb here. You want to play that out, you know, usually after your opponent plays an Alexstrasza or when they're threatening lethal and maybe don't have a secret up, but you can use the Lotheb to push back on your next turn and, and take the win from that. 
I think the, the, the most important part about Lothep in a lot of matchups when you're playing a more aggressive deck against Freeze Mage is trying to use it to cut off key opportunities for them. Mm -hmm. Things like cutting off Frost Nova Doomsayer, things like cutting off their ability to, to replay an ice block when you're able to break their block, uh, playing it into turns where your opponent has mm -hmm. productive minion plays uh, when they are not under significant pressure doesn't really have nearly the impact of playing it in a turn where it cuts off their key interaction. Yeah, for sure. You never want to play it going into turn six um, against the Freeze Mage because just drop Thoris on. It doesn't even do anything. If he'd played it this last turn, APX Void could have just uh, yep. played the Acolyte of Pain, pinged it, gotten cards, and, and we didn't really have to sacrifice anything because of the Lotheb. So you want to use it when it's at, at its most inconvenient for your opponent. Yeah, and Chalky's actually not that far off from just being able to to break this block. Not next turn, but uh, but in the next two turns. And wow. I, I actually, ooh, that's a bold choice. <laughs> All right. So now we see the spirit go off for Chalky. He still has pretty significant board presence here. And I actually would not be surprised to see Lotheb this turn because while it would allow APX Void to play Emperor, uh, he, he could actually just break block the following turn and kill Emperor with his board that he'd have as a result. But Brian Kibler, <laughs> it's turn six. <laughs> There's a mysterious challenger in the hand. It's true. How could you say something like that? It's a gold <laughs> mysterious challenger. I understand challenger. this is a crazy idea to not play mysterious challenger on six. But, uh, but I mean, if, if APX Void were to play Emperor Tharrison uh, on this turn, he would get his block broken. He would not be able to to really deal with with what Chaki has in play. Mm -hmm. uh, and Chaki would be able to remove mm. the Emperor. So he would be in, a, I think, a fairly commanding position here uh, if he was, if he were to throw down that Lotho. Yeah, I agree. The Mysterious Challenger is the first inclination, but as, as much power as it puts on the board, it doesn't do anything against Frost Nova. Can't fight against a Blizzard. You play this Lotho now, and Chaki is almost, you know, guaranteeing that he has two turn lethal. And one of the key things here, Chaki held back his weapon. Mm -hmm. uh, you've seen him using that Lights Justice every turn to just chip away for damage here. The last charge is ultra valuable because it represents the ability to break your opponent's ice block with something that can't be frozen by Frost Nova or Blizzard. Yeah. Exactly. That's uh, icing on the cake there with the Blessing of Kings. He doesn't <laughs> even need that at the moment. Yeah, this is kind of like an embarrassment of riches for Chalky right now. He has so much more than he needs to actually to actually break the block. And we see him yeah, just wipe everything out. Trade. I imagine we're going to see Lotheb trade with mm -hmm. the Emperor because that gives him a board full of Death Rattle minions even. And this is the sort of draw that we were talking about earlier that allows the Freeze Mage deck to really actually push uh, on the or rather, allows the Seeker Paladin deck to really pressure the Freeze Mage. And I like Challenger here, if only because it gets those secrets out of your deck that you really don't want yeah. to draw. Exactly. If you do have an Owl in your deck, if you do have a more useful card, you don't want to be top decking Noble Sacrifice. You don't want to top deck Avenge. Play it now, get him out, and ensure that your next draw will more likely be something useful. And I don't think... Uh, there's so many cards in his hand, it's hard to tell. <laughs> I don't, there's not another Ice Block in there for APX Void. No, and I don't no. see an Ice Lance either. I oh, believe he can Nova and Doomsayer, and perhaps play Barrier, which will save mm -hmm. him from the weapon, uh, but would not save him if Chucky were to draw, say, a Consecration. Yeah. Um, and will still leave Chucky with a pretty significant board thanks to all those Death Rattles once it resolves. And also, the, the Avengers will, you know, kick yeah. in mm -hmm. uh, still even after the Death Rattles proc, so it's still going to be a, a relatively scary board, and... Uh, this is a smart play. Repentance is something that you definitely need to keep mm -hmm. in mind. Uh, b getting a, a Doomsayer brought down to one health when your opponent has a conveniently placed one damage weapon. That could be disastrous. That would have been awful. Yeah, and we see uh, APX Void has the tools to play all of it. The, the Thalnos, Doomsayer, Frost Nova, and the barrier to keep him alive. <laughs> Puff the secret I like that. It. Oh, man. <laughs> Well, there's not really too much Jackie can do in this situation. Uh, I don't think playing the Pile of Shredder is correct just because uh, you're already going to have a lot of Death Rattle creatures on the board. Pile of, if your opponent has AoE, that's just giving them more stuff to, to AoE oh, down the next turn because usually the minion's not that great. Chucky's real debate here is, is whether he wants to attack with his weapon because uh, if, if it is Ice Block, he obviously wants to break block here. Uh, barrier, he might want to actually save his weapon against Barrier because his weapon can, can later actually... Uh, potentially represent the ability to break a future block still, and the one damage versus the eight armor isn't that big a deal. 
Uh, I actually, it looks like Chalky is debating playing the Shredder because I think he just wants to uh, establish a board uh, as much as possible immediately following this Doomsayer uh, exploding. Yeah. And yeah, unfortunately, we see that APX Void has that flame strike. He's got the blizzard. Uh, Chalky's going to try to establish this board. The Revenge and the Avenge oh, are going well. to. I, yeah. That's problematic. <laughs> if it avenges on the avenges onto it, it's the big deal. Reaper. Ooh, it did not. Oh, that's unfortunate. Fallen hero. Okay. <laughs> and Defias. All right, but the, all the, the reduced cost cards. flame strike here is huge. He's able to use the ping to clear off the uh, the creeper and then flame strike and clear the board. And this, in, in this instance, I actually think that. Uh, we may be seeing Chucky getting a, a little bit punished for his decision to play that Shredder here because now he has no real big threat uh, to actually play. And now we're gonna actually getting into the to the uh, the turn where Apex Void can potentially just fire off that Alexstrasza. Oh, True Silver! That's a nice draw. That matters a lot. That's a really nice draw. Well, at this stage, I mean, the Secret Paladin's out of cards. How likely is just a defensive Alexstrasza? Uh, I would say very uh, it's very likely. likely. Very yeah. likely. Uh, but it's still, and, and this I actually think, if, if Chalky had the Shredder to play right now, that's a lot more pressure, and the defensive Alexstrasza is a lot less relevant because he's able to potentially uh, generate that big threat immediately. Mm -hmm. But I, I suspect what we will see, uh, maybe not. Anti -heal bot. The heal bot changes things. Yeah, Chalky was so far ahead for so long, and he 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 had almost won the game. Um, but APX Void's board clears just a little bit too strong. Maybe Chalky was a little bit greedy with that Shredder play. That seems like how Secret Paladin versus Freeze Mage usually goes. Yeah. <laughs> well, You're that, like, I mean, that's I'm exactly. Do it. Yeah. And then you just don't. Yeah. yeah, that's that's exactly how how these games often pan out. Is that it looks like you're so far ahead, but then they they just turn the corner and suddenly are playing all these things which just stop you from ever having a chance of winning. Well, he's gonna hold off on defensive Alexstrasza. That he realizes that anti kill bot's gonna get him up uh, pretty far in health. And Secret Paladins, they run out of juice. He's, Jockey's pretty much out of resources. Keeper Voldemort, he can use that to buff up a 1-1. One, one. Okay. one of his guys. Voldemort's not around it. You see the Secret Paladins occasionally teching in a Divine Favor. That's their main source of card draw, but I, I'm guessing that Chalky doesn't have it in his deck. It would be pretty nice here, but with APX Void's hand, I don't even know that a Divine Favor would, would win Chalky this game. The problem is that so many of the cards in Chalky's deck just don't do anything at this point. Mm -hmm. uh, once once you get to the stage where the Freeze Mage player has both the cards and the mana to continue to play Freeze Effects and Board Clear Effects, uh, in many cases while also advancing their own game state with things like uh, Antonitis, as we're going to see yeah. here, uh, it, it ends up being extremely difficult for the Freeze Mage, or rather for the Paladin player to win just because so many of their cards essentially don't have game text. Yeah, I'm, I'm seeing a concede in Chalky's future. This game just unfortunately got away from him a little bit. Yeah. Chalky is a player, though, that likes to see things through to the end. He, he tries to get as much information as possible out of his opponent. Uh, in Conquest, it's sort of irrelevant because once someone wins... Yep. The, uh, the only information you get here is that you have fireballs in your hand. Yeah, so. uh, I think he has uh, at least two fireballs in his hand. <laughs> Potentially a nice block, but I'm not sure yet. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Goes right, goes ahead and concedes, but uh, he's still in a good spot. He's up two to one in the series. That's the matchup that he probably knew that he was going to do the worst in, mm -hmm. uh, looking at the lineup of APX Void. So still got two more chances left, but Secret Paladin hasn't been too successful today. It, it has struggled, and I think that that one of the stories we've seen is that players have recognized that Secret Paladin is going to be a very popular deck, and they've chosen to design their lineups with that in mind. Uh, we did just see Nostrum win 3-0 uh, against Admirable's Paladin after being down 0-2, yeah. uh, simply because his lineup was really built to punish those Secret Paladin decks. Yeah, Corey, yeah. you think a lot of players had the plan of targeting getting Secret Paladin coming into these prelims? I think if you're going to reverse sweep a deck, the Secret Paladin is much more likely than something like a Druid or a Control Warrior, just because it is so easily targeted, and there are matchups that it just is almost unable to win, and the Freeze Mage is definitely one of them. Yeah, I think uh, Secret Paladin needs a, a little bit something more to help it in the current <laughs> environment. Uh, I think uh, maybe a Force of Nature or a Savage Roar would really okay. help Secret Paladin Muster be fast. successful. Muster plus Savage Roar sounds pretty good. Yes, it does. <laughs> some turn four lethals on the horizon there. <laughs>
Um, All right, speaking of turn four lethals, here is Aggro Shaman. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Topical. A yeah. wonderful segue. Um, and, and this is actually a deck that, that in many cases can also punish Secret Paladin decks uh, because many Secret Paladin decks are really built to be very strong in the mid game. Uh, and, and can often struggle to deal with the very fast starts that the aggro paladin decks are capable of generating. And this is one of the best starts that you can have as an, an aggro shaman. Oh yeah. So <laughs> you, you can coin out a totem golem, follow that up with a leper gnome, and then feral spirits. So totem golem is the hardest creature to deal with, mm -hmm. and they're not going to deal with it by turn three, so you put your strongest one on the board first, and then you have feral spirits to sort of back it up. So there's a lot of options with this sort of li um, card lineup here that APX Ford has in his mulligan. When yep. the Aggro Shaman has a hand like this, it kind of makes the Secret Paladin looks, look like it's it's not that great. I mean, you've got Secret Keeper in hand, but Gasp. it's not automatically a 3-4. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to say Secret Paladin, a little more fair. Uh, I mean, only when you see the Aggro Shaman's hand looking like this. Yep. Yeah, and we see Chalky with, with a hand full of those mid-range cards like we were just discussing. Uh, that will not save him from these Totem Golem into Lepronome into Feral Spirits. He's going to be behind the whole way until uh, until that point. That Noble Sacrifice is a very good draw. Uh, it does uh, potentially protect his Secret Keeper here uh, from getting just immediately cleared by the Totem Golem and also grows it to a 2-3, which allows it to threaten to kill Lepronome without dying. So that was a very big draw from Chalky this turn. Actually, that was a huge draw leading into the muster for battle on turn three, which he can just use the weapon to clear off the Leper Gnome. Um, and then a piloted Shredder on turn four. We're likely going to see Apex Void and you know, maybe even play the Lightning Bolt on the Secret Keeper instead of the Leper Gnome down this turn. I, I think we will. And he'll yeah. potentially be able to follow this up with a Totem Golem rather than Feral Spirits next yeah. turn. Still a powerful minion. It, it's still a, a totally reasonable uh, place for him to be, but not at nearly as, as dominating a board position as he would have had if Chucky did not draw that Noble Sacrifice. Yeah. It's really tough for Secret Paladins to actually deal with Feral Spirits, um, at least in time for them to not have taken too much damage where they've already lost the game. A lot of Secret Paladins cut Consecration, or at least one Consecration, yeah. from their lineups. That, that has actually been, the evolution of Secret Paladin has been very interesting. Because Let's sit down for a lesson with with All Papa right. Kibler. <laughs> well, I think that a lot of the early versions of Secret Paladin that, that we saw were basically aggro Paladin decks that had just Secret Keeper at the top of their curve and a mm -hmm. bunch of secrets in them. Uh, and then you know, sort of saw more of an evolution to more of a mid-range deck, some of the decks topping out with, with Doctor Boom and Tyrion. And, and you know, now we even see some versions that play Ragnaros. Uh, and uh, like you said, people have been sh you know, shaving down the number of or even cutting entirely cards like Consecration simply because they're situational and don't really gel with the primary game plan. Yeah. I know the first Secret Paladin list I ever played I believe had two Consecrations, two Blessing of Kings, and two True Silver Champions. I was like, there's no way you can take out these class cards. They're so good. <laughs> yeah. um, and now, I mean, most people have taken out both Consecrations. I still have one, but it's more like nostalgia factor at this point. <laughs> yeah, it, it actually has been a really interesting evolution. Yeah, the deck is built to curve out, and sometimes Consecration is not, so, mm -hmm. you don't curve into it. Well, speaking of curving out oh, Secret Paladin awesome. cards, here's Keeper of Ultimon buffing this uh, this silver hand recruit and and suddenly from a a, a game that, that we initially thought looked very much in apex void's favor uh from those opening hands now chalky is the one who has full control of the board and uh, apx void with a hand that is not looking like it's going to do very much anytime soon and honestly it's all stemming from chalky top decking that one get down if he hadn't had that his secret keeper would have just died to the totem golem he would have done uh the leper gnome and then feral spirits the turn after and apx void would be in a much better position but here uh, chalky can just drop the piloted shredder clear off one of the feral spirit totems and, and hero power and yeah, he's even getting very close to Tyrion mana and uh we see Tyrion in his hand He's at 24 life still. This is this is a really bad spot for APX Void. Uh, he needs a lot of help very soon. Yeah. yeah, Ancestral Knowledge and Earth Shock for the upcoming Tyrion, but you always want Doomhammer. Uh, there's too many cards he needs, and Lepernome unfortunately isn't one of them. Yeah, that's that's just not not a card that you really uh, you really want to find right now when you need some powerful uh, powerful impact on this board. He can play both gnomes and hero power and I guess attack phase. But Great. It, this, this is a really awesome. uphill battle. And uh, the, the aggro shaman deck, it, it relies upon putting the opponent in that position that they're reacting to you and, and doesn't play well from behind. Yeah, there are some situations where you, you can come back from behind the board, but 
It revolves Doomhammer and many rock biters. <laughs> oh, it, usually, it usually involves your opponent already being a lot lower than yes. this, too. I mean, even if APX Void drew Doomhammer into Rock Biter into Rock Biter, there's going to be a tear in the way by that point. Yeah. Okay, fortunately for APX Void, the Repentance is a horrible draw for Chalky. <laughs> so basically, he's going to clear off these minions and hero power, play the competitive spirit. Yeah, play the Repentance for the lulls at this point, but it's essentially like he's passing his turn. He's not developing any minion under the board that is of any note. What minions are even left? There's one Tunnel Trog, maybe some Abusive Sergeants and Argent Horse Riders. Repentance is almost useless in this situation, but you play Secrets is always great because you get the bluff factor. What else is he going to do with the mana? <laughs> Might as well get it out of there and time. Oh, Finley! Oh, there you okay. go. Poor, I forgot that one. Poor Murloc. What did he do to deserve this? <laughs> that yeah. was just a 1 1, like so many of his brethren. Yeah. Okay, so he could pick the life tab here if he wants to go with more cards. <laughs> Poor 1 1 Finley. Yeah. I think he Finley is, would he's probably. He's a mere tiny Finn now. Yeah. I think he would, he would still be played if he was a 1 1, just because of the. <laughs> I also want to point out uh, that the sequencing from APX Void, whenever you use Sir Finley, you want to make sure if you're going to have the excess mana anyway, to use your old hero power first mm -hmm. before playing the Sir Finley, because that way you get to double dip in both hero powers. Yeah, mm. much like uh, much like Justicar Trueheart, you get additional value yeah. out of your uh, out of your uh, uh, hero power getting replaced. And here we see we see a little bit of a, a yeah. head shake from ABX Void, trying to play around Avenge, ends up getting punished by Competitive Spirit, and now uh, I believe it is time for Chalky to put his faith in the light. He has Tyrion in his hand, and a lot of damage on this board already. He may uh, he, he can potentially close this game out in uh, in just two more turns, or either one more turn after this one if he chooses to go face. And uh, basically, APX Void would have to have something like Doomhammer, Rockbiter, Rockbiter, and an Earthshock in those three cards yeah. that he has access to. Okay, so Ancestral Knowledge into... Doomhammer Ancestral Knowledge, then Ancestral Knowledge into <laughs> Earthshock Rockbiter, then a third Ancestral Knowledge into Rockbiter Rockbiter, and into, finally into like eight more mana inner crystals. Base. Yeah, I think that's about 15 <laughs> mana there was total. Earthshock. So, uh, all right, so Tyrion will not uh, will not be able to close this game out just yet, and Apex Void. Oh, oh no! no. Oh, no. One Divine Shield taunt goes down. Yeah. Oh, look at Shocky right there. And the thumbs up from Shocky, he knows. He knows that's uh, wow. pretty good for him right now. Yeah. Oh my god, oh, Chalky didn't Rock DM bite. greeting. The Anoyotron did. <laughs> the Stone Cold Chalk. Look at this Rock Fighter to take out the Anoyotron. <laughs> and there it is. Yeah. Chalky is the winner, 3-1 over APX Void, and we'll move on to uh, the top 16 Yeah, tomorrow. that's super impressive, man. Uh, Chalky, he had a couple of chances to do with that Secret Paladin, managed to do it with the Aggro Shaman, and um, you know, Chalky, I, I've been talking to him a lot over the past couple of weeks, and he's one of those players that has put in a lot of work, and he has been practicing a lot with Admirable, and of course his, his teammates, Blackout, Green Sheep, Kranich, over in Korea and, and um, the UK, so uh, it, it's good to see it paying off. Um, but APX Void is on Hearthlytics. Hearthlytics has actually done pretty good mm -hmm. today. Muzzy, uh, Frozen, I think uh, a few of them are still left in it. Yeah, I mean, we've seen quite a few, quite a few players who, who, who players are familiar with, kind of at odds with the results last weekend, mm -hmm. uh, who are still remaining in this event. A, a lot of uh, a lot of big names. Uh, I, you know, we, we did see uh, Kit Kats move on earlier today. He's yep. going to be in the top 16. And, uh, we, you know, much less of, a, of an upset story like we saw uh, at the European preliminary last weekend. Yeah, for sure. I do have to ask, TJ, do you think Chalky's success has anything to do with the fact that you made him the screensaver on our computer? <laughs> yes. yes. Absolutely. It did. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> All right. We, in we, that case, you're welcome, Chalky. <laughs> we've been able to channel the inner energies yes. uh, of Chalky. Uh, he has a, a very meme-worthy face, mm -hmm. as a lot of people have noticed in the past. But uh, that's actually um, that's the last match of the day. So I want to get your guys' opinion um, as we move towards Towards day two, Corey, we'll start with you. Uh, what have been your thoughts on day one so far? Has anything surprised you? Has anything stood out? How have you enjoyed it? Oh, I think it's been a great day. I know personally this has been my first live event, so I've had a great time just being here, a great time casting, but I think we've seen some really high-quality matches. I know, I think that last one was probably my favorite. Yeah. It's hard to ignore a Wind Fury Sea Giant. Like, mm -hmm. it, it was just a really good game. Um, uh, as far as the other matches we've seen today, I don't think I'm too surprised by some players that have made it through. It's great to see some big names like Kit Kats, like Chalky, get a chance to shine again. Um, and we have seen some lesser known players who have come out ahead and have had some great success. So I think it was a nice mix of the old and the new today. Um, a little bit different than Europe, but I would say it's been a really great day. 
and Kibler, has it met your standards? Uh, yeah, absolutely. I think that that we've seen a lot of a lot of great games and a lot of different takes on strategies that have have uh, brought players success. Uh, I really liked seeing Chess Guy having success with a, a lineup that didn't include either Warrior or Warlock, mm -hmm. uh, which has been very uncommon in this event. And uh, he you know, had Priest and did very very well with yeah. with that lineup. I believe he's actually advanced to the top sixteen tomorrow as well. Yeah, Chess Dude, Chess Dude, Chess, yeah. chess Dude, <laughs> Chess Guy, <laughs> yeah. it's Chess Individual. I yeah. don't Chess what individual. Chess Man, know. Chess Man. <laughs> He, he's after the America preliminary. He's going to upgrade to Chess Man. <laughs> chess Man, one, two, three. He's earned it. Yeah. Uh, but it's been a great day casting with you guys. Uh, that's going to do it for us here at the Caster Desk. I believe we have Dan standing by to help close out the day. Thank you very much, TJ, Brian, and Corey. You guys have did such an excellent job today. We've had a great series of matches, and we wrapped it up with one of the players who people expect to do very well to once again go into the top 16, guaranteeing themselves $2,500. Uh, and that wraps up the show. We hope you guys have really enjoyed it so far. Uh, we have eight players who are going to be going to the Winter Championships next month, and one of them potentially could be Keaton Chakagil, who's once again joining me on the line for a quick winner's interview. Uh, Chuck, can you hear me? Yeah, I can. Awesome, man. Congratulations on your win. Uh, first, I want to just talk to you about uh, what's what's it like being able to start off so hot in the tournament, and what do you think is the secret to your success so far? Uh, well, it's not really any like anything new to me. In the 2014 regionals, I actually went 5-0 and in this portion, so I'm on track to do that again. Of course, I missed last year, so... Kind of mixed results, but it feels really great to start off so well. I mean, going to going to sleep tonight feeling really good. Coming in tomorrow, only have to win one more. That's right. That's right. And, uh, you know, assuming you can go through, you're going to be uh, appearing in the Winter Championships. Uh, can you talk a little bit about uh, the environment at the fireside gathering that um, you're at? Can you talk a little bit about, like, the atmosphere, the environment, et cetera? Yeah, it's actually really great here. Um, they're very, you know, hospitable towards us. Uh, it's very relaxed. They've got like a player area and a spectator area, and those two areas don't collide. So, you know, it's not like loud. There's no people everywhere. It's just like sit down, play your matches afterward, just go to the player lounge, relax, and probably one of the, you know, nicest events I've been to. Oh, that's a really good compliment, considering you've traveled so much to many events thus far. Uh, I will ask you one more question before I give you your final shout-outs. Uh, how are you going to relax tonight? I know it's, a lot of times people get into their own mind of how they're going to try to reset for the next day, but a lot can change mentally. Uh, is there any kind of thing that you're going to be doing specifically, whether a victory meal or some kind of ritual that you usually do before bed? Well, I haven't got any Snapple, so i got to run and get some Snapple for tomorrow. Uh, but other than that, I'll probably grab a bite to eat. And, yeah, head to bed, get a lot of rest, and be prepared for tomorrow. Oh, don't hurt yourself, Chucky. Be careful. All right. Well, uh, you stay out of trouble, you rascal. In the meantime, congratulations. Do you have any last words and shout-outs before we let you go? Uh, shout-outs to the Salt Boys. We've got two in the winner's top eight right now. Kit Kats is repping, and uh, that's admirable. Unfortunately, fell, I heard. But still in the loser's bracket, can still come back, so... We've got three people that could potentially top eight pretty good. Uh, the, the European guys let us down, so we have to kind of avenge them. All right. Well, congratulations once again, Chucky. We'll see you tomorrow, and good luck in your upcoming matches. Thanks. All right, so that was Chalky from Team Dignitas. Uh, once again, another player that has shown repeated consistency. In 2014, he was one of the finalists for America's then being very close to being able to go to BlizzCon itself, but ultimately falling short. Will his dreams be realized? We'll find all this out tomorrow uh, at 10 p.m. here on the Twitch channel slash Play Hearthstone. So make sure to hit the follow button and get upcoming schedules of how all the broadcasts are going to go, not just for Americas, but all the regions. Once again, the next time we're going to be doing the seasonal championship is in March. It's coming up very quickly, along with all the exciting things coming from Play Hearthstone. Thank you so much to everybody who's used social media to engage with us by hashtagging HCT and tweeting us at Play Hearthstone. Let us know your thoughts as well on the internet. There's also the Facebook option, facebook.com slash Hearthstone. I'm Frodan from everybody here in Burbank, California. Thank you so much for watching, and we'll see you guys tomorrow.